Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the country. Today, I'm going to show you a decorative finish using layered plaster techniques and a pearlescent wax, all from a company called Modern Masters. So, let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. All right, today's technique is one that I'm creating a sample for a project that was specified by an architect and an interior designer working together. So I'm using a product from Modern Masters, a California-based company that makes all kinds of great products, but today I'm using their acrylic Venetian plaster, uh, which is an interior-only product, cleans up with soap and water, and it's a very versatile product. It's just simply called Modern Masters Venetian plaster. Now I'll make sure I'll put some links to this down on the bottom here in the comments section. So, interior only, cleans up with soap and water, it'll go over top of any flat paint, no special primer, it's not a proprietary product. It will tint with just about any type of pigment. Liquid pigments, powdered pigments, anything but paint. Paint will dilute the product and it will ruin the product, so use pigments. You can also take it to your local paint store and have them color it for you using the same pigment system that you, they use to tint paint. What I'm using, based on what the architects want, is a color pack. This is from Modern Masters. Whoops, Let's see if you can see that. It's uh, one of the, what they consider it was a shimmer stone color, but it's a universal color and it works in a lot of their products. This is a color called chocolate raspberry. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Interior only, cleans up with soap and water, tints with pigments. We're using a Modern Masters pigment called chocolate raspberry. For the rest after that part, we're going to do a three color process, basically blending and building some layers. Um, we're just going to use the chocolate raspberry and then in full strength, knock it down 50 percent, and then we're going to use uh, probably about maybe a 10 percent. So it's the same color and just variations of the color to get what we're looking for. So for this, we want to use, you know, a good stainless steel trowel because they're going to be fairly light colors. Um, now this product will dry a little bit lighter than when it's wet, so don't if you try to adjust something, you know, dry sample, always dry samples. But we're going to use a stainless steel spatula like always and our stainless steel trowel. And again, pay attention to the comment section because I'll put all the links to these so you can get these products on your own. You don't have to go through the studio, but you can just buy them there. So the first thing I did is I primed the board using a 3 8 inch nap roller. The 3 8 inch is the thickness of the nap of the roller. We didn't want a heavy fat texture because that roller nap, nap could telegraph through the plaster. So rolled it on and I just used a, uh, what did I use for this? I'm going to refresh my memory. This is from the Zinser Corporation and it is called Bullseye. That's the actual name of the product. It says Bullseye. It's a red and white can and it dries to a dead flat and it's inexpensive and this stuff is fantastic. It cleans up with soap and water. Um, I believe it's an interior only product. I don't have it here in front of me to look, but pretty sure it's interior only. Just read the can. It'll tell you interior, exterior. But it's an interior only product, so we can't be playing games. This is an interior finish that I'm going to be putting in a dining room. So, rolled it on a 3 8 inch snap roller, clean my tools up with soap and water, and I'm getting ready to go. I've already tinted my Modern Masters Venetian plaster with the chocolate raspberry to get this very warm, warm look. So first thing I'm going to do is put some on my trowel. Now this is not a traditional Venetian plaster finish. This is a decorative finish using a product called Venetian plaster. Like I've always said before, there's a lot of them out there. Some, you know, they're not all created equal, but some do different things than the others, than others. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it on. I'm not too concerned right now about making it perfectly smooth. Actually, I'm not really concerned about that at all. I just want a nice even finish, not a whole lot happening, because we're going to do that in the, in the upcoming layers, for the layers to follow. But I just want a nice base color. I could have painted or tinted my primer to a matching, a matching color, but it wouldn't give me the same texture, the same look that I'm going for. This is going to be a fun, I don't want to say, actually it's not an old world finish, it's going to be more of a modern finish with kind of an old world technique. So just kind of not too busy with the trial marks or the pattern of the trial. 
So this does have to dry 100% before I can carry on. So there's that. Let's get the, all the little nooks and crannies. Okay, we're going to let this dry, come back. On to the next part. We'll see in a little bit. Okay, we're ready to move on. As you can see, this is 100% dry, and the color looks like warm beach sand. That's the color we're going for. So if you have a hard time finding the um, colorant from Modern Masters, the chocolate raspberry, remember warm beach sand. Now, this is what I was talking about down here. See where it's not 100% dry? See the discolorate, the difference between the two colors? So that's what I'm talking about. Dry samples, very, very important. Okay, so we're going to just move on. So we're going to bring some new things into this. This is a plaster hawk. Get them at any uh, paint store, anywhere. Um, I use the ones with the rubber handles on the bottom, not the wooden handles, because I don't like the way they feel. It's that simple. Um, and a natural wool sea sponge. So we're going to take the exact same color, full concentrate, or full strength, just like we used for the base coat, and we are going to put it on the hulk. Don't need a lot. We'll just put some on here, and you'll see why. Just like if I was working on a project, no difference. I'm going to use the flat side of my sponge. Dip it in and offload, because I don't want a big bunch of mess on the wall, meaning I don't want it to be like clumps of it. I want to be able to control it. And what I'm going to do is just kind of come through here like so. Some areas I'm going to put a little thicker, a little heavier. And I'm not going straight across. I'm not going up and down. I'm not trying to create distinct patterns. Some areas I might not even really hit a whole lot. And this is going to create a base for my next coat. And what's going to happen is I need this to firm up. Not dry, firm. And I'm going to come back and knock it down. with a magic trowel. So yeah, another different tool or a different tool. Just got to be careful. I want it to look organic and natural. I'm not trying to create um, islands like spots on a cow. Or it all has to kind of just work in harmony. All right. So we're going to, let's see. Needs to firm up. So typically that would be about based on temperature and humidity, could be a while. Don't want to dry, it won't work. The magic trial, and that's what it's called, the magic trial. With this, I can use a very light pressure in this state. I'm not going to be bang, bearing on it. I'm not going to put a lot on it. I'm just going to lightly come across and just ever so gently knock down the high spots. Keep a rag handy because it's going to get some material on it. Just wipe it off as you go. And the biggest thing is I'm going to come back a different direction. Because I don't want it to look like it's going in any one particular direction. Meaning, don't pull top to bottom all the time. We're trying to get you wondering how we did it. And as the product firms up or sets up, I can use more pressure. Okay. So now we need to let that dry 100%, come back and carry on. But again, look at the difference. Wet, dry, wet, dry. Now when that dries, it's going to look the same color. Be the, the color is going to be the same. But you're going to see a slight difference because of the texture we just created. So let's let it dry. We'll come back and carry on. Okay, we're 100% dry. We're going to move on. First thing I want to do is grab my stainless steel trowel. And uh, just kind of hit some areas a little bit, burnish a pinch of it here and there. I know it's completely dry and it goes totally in the opposite of everything I've always said about other plasters. But the key word there is other plasters. We're not trying to do a design, traditional finish. It's more of a decorative finish. Completely different. Don't think, it, that's the thing. Once you understand your materials and you understand the rules and you put, know how to put the two together, then you can start have fun breaking the rules. As long as it's done, it doesn't compromise the product. So, 
There we go. That's the base. Now back to the Hulk. I'm going to take some of our full strength chocolate raspberry and I'm going to take some of the tint base right out of the can. Okay. Equal parts, 50-50. Now if I was doing this on the project, I would have this done ahead of time in buckets. So I'm not going to um, make a mistake. Just mix these two together. You know, I, I'll even use these hawks to apply the Venetian with from time to time, just depending on what I'm doing. Is that a little bit more white? There we go. But if, like I said, I would have buckets mixed up pre-made and I always make up more than what I think I'm going to need just because you don't want to run out and make a mess. There we go. All right. Now, let's see here. Trial. Remember, it's going to dry lighter. I'm putting it on. I'm not even worried about 100% coverage here. Simply because I want some of that darker color to poke through. Remember, now these look almost identical right now. It's hard for you to see it at this point. Remember, the color I'm applying now will dry lighter. And that's very important knowing, as, knowing that as we go into this. So, but I don't want it real thick. That's my base. All right, we're done with that. Now, while this is still damp, let's grab some of our white base. Come on. It's been setting for a little bit. So once these products set for a little bit, they tend to get thick, they tend to get gummy. Um, just whip it up, no big deal. Back to the natural wool sea sponge, flat side. Let's just get a little bit on here, load it up, pull the excess off, and let's kind of just add it in. Now we got to be careful. We don't want to overblend because then we're going to lose some of, well, if we overblend, we're going to lose our separation of color, create a whole new color, and we have a mess on our hand. Now let's just take this and blend it in. And we can keep doing this fun little dance back and forth. blending these colors. All right, and that's all we're going to keep doing for a little while. And the nice thing is I'm going to pull it different directions. And then look, I can get this real cloudy look down here. I can get some hard color up there. If I apply a little bit more pressure, I can really smash them together. And, and kind of start working. So this is the kind of finish where practice, 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 finesse, get used to the materials, and don't expect like a fast, quick result. And don't get frustrated if it doesn't turn out the exact way you want it the first time you try it, because it's not. It's going to take some work. Now what I can do too, is so I'm going to put a little bit more white down in here blend it in and the cool thing is if I'm not happy with the way some of this looks meaning that's a little too white guess what I have handy pull some of this off let's grab some more of this back our first color this is our 50 50 mix I'm gonna go back over top of some of the white and bury it in I can even use my trowel if I want and grab some even my white. And we're going to get this to dry. Now what's happening, like some of this area is a little too, dar too dry, so I can't get the bl colors to blend. No big deal. I can just go back and get some more of my uh, base 
blending material is what we'll call it, the one that's a 50-50 mix. And I can start going back and forth. I do need some more of the white base. So it's just one of those things. It's like back and forth and back and forth. And I know what you're going to say. It's a lot of time to do a big wall or an entire room. Yes, it is. It's not like paint. Look, we're creating a one-of-a-kind finish. And we want it to be awesome. We don't want something that we can see all the time or over in our neighbor's house or just some stuff off the shelf. We want it to be cool, interesting. Might come back up here now. I'm not happy with this hard, all this hard stuff up here. So you can see by working the tools back and forth, you can get all kinds of fun, interesting patterns. I'm not ready for that white yet. Up here, I want to put just a little bit more of this. Remember, these two colors are going to blend, or the, I'm sorry, the darker color is going to lighten up. So keep that in mind. Now, so this isn't 100% smooth. I've got some divots here and there. I'm going to come back with some of this up here now. I'm going to go back over top of some of the stuff that I did. Heck, let's just put some white in there while we're at it. see what we get. Woo, piece of sponge. Got to be careful, remember, it's a natural material. Don't freak out, it's not a big deal. I'm going to leave those divots here from that sponge. You know what? And that's it. I'm going to let this dry, come back, burnish it, and silver wax. See you after it's dry. Okay, 100% dry. I know it's 100% dry but I'm going to burnish it anyway. I'm going to be very careful not to leave carbon deposits on this. I could have done it in a damp state, but this is a neat plaster. And it will still give me a slight burnish when it's 100% dry. Now, it's not going to get that mirror-like sheen that we get from a lot of plasters. But then again, I'm also burnishing it when it's dry, not in a humid state. But I don't want the mirror-like sheen. I want a nice, just highlighting it right here and there, okay? So before I carry on, I'll show you what I got. And this is it. Now, we could leave it simply like this. Look at this. Soft cloud-like, little interesting texture. Slight, tiny, tiny, tiny sheen. Nothing, like I said, just a bunch, just to punch it up a little bit. Now, you could leave it like this. That's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with it. But if it gets damaged, I'm not damaged, if it's uh, soda, ju grape juice, or red wine, things like that, it's going to leave a stain. So if that's the case, use the protective top coat that Modern Masters makes. Excuse me. So they make a protective top coat. It's clear and pearlescent. And you just trowel it on like you do the plaster, thin, thin layer. Don't go too heavy. Too heavy can get cloudy. Um, you trowel it on, leave it alone and it just dries like that. It's, it's think of like a paste-like polyurethane or a paste-like varnish, for lack of a better term. It's a paste material, and you just trial it on, leave it alone, dries, hard as a rock, and you're good. But for this one, uh, they want some silver, I'm sorry, pearlescent highlights. So I'm going to drop back to the Italian polishing wax that we have here. And uh, I've got this, the pearl wax. And I'm just going to trowel on a coat of pearl wax over the entire surface. And just like so. I'm going to get a rag handy because it's got some texture. And what's happening is this looks completely different because of that texture. 
So I want the wax over the surface, but I don't want it real thick. Now remember, this is going to darken up a little bit, but it's also going to lighten back up once it's dry. So some of these areas, we just want to soften it up. So the areas where we created some of this texture, it's really going to get stuck down in there, and that's not what we want. That's why I'm taking a rag and coming back and grabbing some of it. And then once it's dry, and it's almost dry, it really sucked in the wax. We're going to come back with a clean rag, and we just happen to have one right here. <laughs> Lint-free, cotton fur, lint-free, color-free, because we don't want any lint to get stuck in the wax, and we don't want any colorants like this black t-shirt. If I use this, the dyes could come out and damage the finish. So I'm just going to go in here now, polish this up. And give it a nice luster. Warm, warm, warm. Okay, and it's going to dry. As it dries, these dark spots are going to fade away. Okay, so we'll let this dry up, come back, polish it a little bit more, and we'll finish it out. So the wax is 100% dry. I'm just going to hit it again real quick, buff it out. You don't want to wait for the wax to set too long, or else you're not going to be able to polish it up. Okay, let's pull this tape off and see what we got. Okay, it's coming off nice and simple. A lot of it's not falling off onto the floor. And we got just the right amount of silver highlights that we're looking for. And let's take a peek here. So, can you see that? There's your nice cloudy look. And you can see the silver and, I'm sorry, the pearlescent highlights. Just enough. Sorry, I have to look off to the side so I can see what you're looking at. Look at that. That's pretty. Still not super shiny, highly reflective in the fact that you can't see my reflection, but that's not what we're going for with this. This is just a nice decorative finish. Soft cloudy areas, a hint of a little texture here. And you can see it there. I mean, there's texture, but that's it. a nice fun decorative finish great accent wall I mean we can come back and layer some other colors of wax into it we could do some other things but this is what we're going for this is what we have and uh, perfect there we go I want to thank you for watching do me a quick favor if you don't mind hit the like and the subscribe button down below my name is Ron Lehman I'm from the Faux School in Frederick Maryland where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the country thank you for watching and I'll see you next time